Okay, welcome to laboratory assignment number five. We are going to uh, be working on Pearson R's and Spearman R's on um, the lab today. So the first three are Pearson R's and then the last three are Spearman R's. So I'll be showing you uh, the first Pearson R and then the first Spearman R and you'll do basically the other two for each test on your own. So um, the first thing that we're going to do is read the research design for SPSS application number one. It says, suppose that an educational researcher knows the average class size and average achievement test scores from five elementary schools in a particular small school district. The scores are as follows. And then uh, you see the data set there with school one having a class size of 25 and an average test score of 80 and then so on and so forth. So number one says using SPSS create a scatter diagram or a scatter plot and paste it below. Based on the scatter diagram, describe the general pattern of the relationship. So the way that we're going to uh, make a scatter plot is we're going to come up to the data um, editor on SPSS and we're going to go to variable view. And we're going to enter in our uh, variable names first and then we'll go ahead and graph uh, that scatter plot. So the first thing that we want to do is type in class size. Okay, and then the next thing that we want to do is type in test score, remember no spaces, in tab, and I'm just going to leave the two decimals here uh, for correlations, and you'll see why later when we get to Spearman, but it's easier to just leave them in for these. Okay, so then we're going to go to the data view, and I'm going to expand these columns just a smidge here. Okay, and so I should have um, an N of 5, so I'm going to be entering 5 scores for class size and 5 scores for test scores. And these are all uh, test scores here and class size, which is also just a simple count of how many people are in the class. So both, both of these um, variables are... Uh, measured in interval data. Um, okay, so I'm going to enter the class size. And then I'm going to enter the test scores. Okay, so now I have my data entered. So I'm going to make a scatter plot by going up to graphs and then chart builder. And I'm going to come down here to scatter. And I'm going to click on the second one, which if I just leave my cursor over it, it's labeled simple scatter with fit line. I'm going to drag that up. And then I'm going to be putting my class size on the x axis. So I'm just going to click on it and then just drag it. And I'm going to be putting test score on my y axis. And then I'm good to go. So I'm just going to click OK. And my output's going to pop up, and you can go ahead and label it, um, you know, with your uh, lab 5 and SPSS application number 1. And then this is the um, scatter plot here with what we call a fit line or a regression line. And so you are going to describe this uh, scatter plot. And so first of all, it's asked the direction, positive or negative. And so you can see as class size is increasing, test scores are decreasing. So that's going to be a negative um, direction. And then the next question asks if the strength looks weak, moderate, or strong. And so if these data points are pretty close together and um, kind of tight around this fit line, then we're going to say that we have strong um, a strong correlation but if they start to spread out more than this uh, then we'd say moderate and if they're way spread out we would say that we have um, a weak correlation in terms of strength but here since they're all pretty close to the regression line or the fit line I'm gonna call that um, strong so I'm gonna put an X on the strong here and then do I have homoscedasticity or not are all of the dots um, equally distributed above and below this fit line. And it's an odd number um, of data points. There's five here, so you're gonna have more above and below. But I'd say, you know, it's pretty darn close. This fit line hits this data plot here, and then there's two above and two below. So yeah, I'd say that's 
a pretty good homeostasticity. Even if there was, you know, if the fit line went through this dot as well and there was one above and two below, I'd still say that's pretty good homeostasticity. So this looks good. Um, I'm going to give this a yes on homoscedasticity, like I said. Um, okay. So if you want to have this graph on your SPSS lab assignment, you could screenshot it. Um, and then I go to view, thumbnails, and preview. And then I can just take that and put it right under number one. And then there it is. And so now we are going to, I'm just going to minimize my output here. I should probably save it. Um, okay, so now the next step is to state the null hypothesis. So the null hypothesis here is the hypothesis that nothing's happening or that there's not going to be a significant relationship. So if I was writing the HO for this one, I would just say there is no significant relationship between, between class size and test scores okay so now we're gonna uh, use spss to determine if the researcher can uh, accept or reject ho and so to do that we're going to come back to the spss and we're going to go to analyze correlate bivariate we're going to click on that and then we're gonna move our variables, class size and test scores, oops, class size, and test scores, over into the variables box. Make sure Pearson is checked, two-tailed, and yes, please flag any significant correlations. Okay, so we're gonna click OK. And then just beneath our scatter plot, we are going to find our correlations. So um, you can just look on the first line here that says Pearson R correlation negative 0.904, so we would round that to negative 0.90. And then the exact significance here is 0 0.035, so I would round that to 0 0.04. And then when I was making my decision about accepting or rejecting HO, I would say that this is less than 5 cents, but more than 1 cent, so I'd be able to reject HO, P less than 0 0.05, and I have an N of 5. Um, so I'm going to come back over to my assignment and I am going to report this statistic in APA format. So if we were to report this statistic in APA format, we would write R and then our degrees of freedom would be 3 um, because while they're not given here, we know that the degrees of freedom calculation for Pearson R is N minus 2. So we're going to put a 3 in the degrees of freedom spot. And then that is going to be equal to negative 0.90. And then the significance level is P equals 0 0.04. Okay, so our conclusion then is going to be, like we said, to reject HO. So I'm going to reject HO. And um, 4 cents is less than 5 cents, so I know I can reject P less than 0.05. But uh, four cents is not less than one cent. So I cannot reject at the highest level P less than 0.01, but I can do P less than 0.05. P less than 0.05. So is there a significant relationship between class size and test scores? Um, if we reject HO, we say yes. So I'm going to put an X there. And then if there's a significant relationship, describe it below. So... Um, we did get a negative uh, Pearson R correlation, and our scatter plot also was indicating that we would have a negative um, correlation. So when we have a negative correlation, our variables are going in opposite directions. They're in a negative uh, relationship. They hate each other. They can't wait to get away from each other. So as one variable increases in a negative relationship, the other variable decreases. So in this sentence, we're going to need to uh, mention that this is a negative correlation. Um, it is a correlation of negative 0.90. So any correlation above 
uh, 0 0.80 or negative 0 0.80, we're going to say is very strong. Um, and so I would say that that is a strong correlation. But you can refer to Guilford's interpretation of correlations in the lecture video or in your book um, if you need assistance determining if the strength is weak, moderate, or strong. But I know negative 0 0.90 is strong. So the way I'm going to word this is that there is a significant strong negative correlation between class size and test scores where as class size increases test scores decrease and vice versa as class size decreases test scores increase okay so that's how you do a Pearson R and now I will show you how to do a Spearman R okay so all you need to do for um, Spearman is scroll down to application number four and then we're going to go ahead and enter this data in uh, the research says or the uh, research design says psychologists conducted a study of depression and anxiety using a sample of 12 depressed clients and obtain the following data. So um, we see that here we have anxiety rank, so this is already ordinal, and then here we have a depression score, so this is interval. And the good news is that you can just put it in exactly like that, and SPSS is so cool that it will just convert the depression scores into ordinal data for us so we don't have to worry about ranking on our own. Um, so you can just go ahead and go over to the variable view and then put anxiety and depression. Um, so, okay, now I have my variables all set up and very important, leave the decimals to two after in case SPSS needs to um, do a case of ties where it ranks your interval data with like 3.25 or something. It needs space for those extra two decimals or it will round to a whole number if you put it down to zero and then you would get the wrong Spearman's row or the wrong uh, Spearman correlation coefficient. So leave them at two and then go ahead and click data view. And we're going to enter our anxiety and depression data here. Um, let me just get it where I could see it. Oh, you know what? Let me just do this. Okay, so for anxiety, I'm going to enter in these rankings. Okay, and it says I should have 12 um, people in my sample, so I should have 12 values, and I do. And now I'm going to enter in these depression scores. Okay, so now I'm gonna make a scatter plot. So I'm gonna go to Graphs, Chart Builder, and then I'm going to click Scatter Dot and pull up the second box that says simple scatter with fit line when you put your cursor over it on that top row there and then I'm going to pull anxiety to the x-axis and depression to the y-axis make sure that fit line is checked and click OK and then there I have my uh, scatter plot so I'm going to go ahead and just screenshot this now while I'm thinking of it and I'm going to go ahead and go to view, thumbnails, and then I'm going to pull this right beneath it. Yeah, just like that. Okay, so um, this assignment wants to know the direction of this scatter plot. So I could see that as anxiety rankings are increasing, depression scores are also increasing. So that's going to be a positive correlation where both variables are going in the same direction. Okay, so we have a positive correlation there. So I'm going to put positive on the direction here. Okay, and then I'm going to look to see if it's strong, moderate, or weak. And I would say they're spread out around the regression line. They're not close up to it. So I would say that this looks like kind of a moderate. It's like in the middle of the scatter plot where the majority of the dots are. So I'm going to say that's a moderate looking correlation. Again, if they were spread out further, if I had dots up here and dots down here and dots over here and dots over here, it would be very weak. 
but I could see like a little bit of a linear pattern going on here. Homo's scedasticity, is there an equal number of dots above and below? And it's a, yeah, it looks pretty much equal. So yes, we have homo's scedasticity. And then instead of pasting the scatter plot there, I just added it uh, below application number four. So now I'm ready to state the null hypothesis. So the null hypothesis is going to be there is no significant relationship between anxiety and depression. Okay, so if we want to test our hypothesis and see if we get to accept or reject this null, we're going to need to do a spearmint since we have rank ordered data here. Um, but the cool thing is that you don't have to rank it. SPSS will rank it for us. Uh, so we're going to go to correlate bivariate again. And we're going to move anxiety and depression over. But we're going to unclick Pearson and we're going to click Spearman. And then we're going to make sure two-tailed and flag significant correlations are checked. And we're going to click OK. And then we're going to find our Spearman's row down here. And it says our correlation coefficient is 0.661, which makes sense uh, because our scatter uh, plot here showed kind of a moderate correlation and 0.6 would be kind of a moderate correlation. Um, but it is significant at 0.01, which we would round to 0.02. So um, I am going to write this Spearman's row correlation coefficient in APA format. And so to do that, we're going to put R, um, R, and then little s, although I don't think I could do little s here in preview, so I'm just going to leave it rs. And then uh, degrees of freedom, and the degrees of freedom for this are just going to be n, so n is 12. Let me show you on the output. Okay, so n is 12. So degrees of freedom is just n for Spearman. And then that is going to equal our correlation coefficient. And it is 0.661, so we're going to round that to 0.66. And then comma p equals 0.019 is our significance. So we're going to call that 0.02 with correct rounding. Okay, so what is our conclusion? Well, our p-value is less than 5 cents, so we know we get to reject HO. So that's exciting. So we have to decide if we're going to reject HO at the 0.05 or the 0.01. So since our p-value is 0.02, that's going to be less than 0.05, but not less than 0.01. So we're going to reject p less than 0.05. So number five asks, is there a significant relationship between anxiety and depression? And so since I rejected HO, the answer is going to be yes. And then if there is a significant relationship, describe it below. So since there is a significant relationship, I'm just going to describe it here. Um, so I'm going to say that it's a positive relationship um, that's moderate. And so as one variable increases, the other variable increases and vice versa. So, there is a significant relationship between anxiety and depression, where as anxiety increases, depression increases, and vice versa. And anxiety decreases, depression decreases. Okay, and that is how you do a spearmint.